Reverend Dr. Tamara Hill Bennett. I'm standing in for Pastor KJ. Um, Dare to imagine is my church. Amen. <laughs> like a lot of people will say, um, I'm a proud member of Dare to Imagine. And it is my pleasure to be before you um, this, this evening. And so with that, you all know that this year's theme is Elevate. And so as we have embarked on 2024, we have um, put together some elevation lessons or elevate lessons for you for Bible study. So the first one we did um, elevate your prayer. And then um, now we're getting into um, elevate your generosity, elevate your generosity. I want y'all to think about what I talked about when I said elevate your faith. That was last week, elevate your faith and how you would power into others when you are lacking or you're feeling a little down with your faith. Amen. Next slide. So tonight I want you to power up your generosity power up your generosity. And I want you to understand where generosity comes from. One of the things that we're going to work through tonight is um, a, how we develop generosity. And that's why I have this ladder here. We'll go over why that ladder is here um, in a moment. But we want to be able to power up our generosity and understand what generosity means and what it means to each and every person. Amen. Um, Because it may not mean the same to everybody else. Amen. Next slide. So elevate your happiness through generosity. When we're giving it for some, it can just make them happy right? Whether it's serving, especially with our Dare to Bless and all of the outreach that goes on here at Dare to Imagine, whether it's serving on ministry or whether it's just, um, you know, giving monetarily. It's, it's, it just makes us happy when you're giving. And so generosity is the most natural outward expression of an inner attitude of compassion and loving kindness. So it's an inward. We talk about that when we do our new members class, when God wants our heart. It's our inner um, expression of an outward, you know, it's an outward expression of an inner feeling. Amen. So tonight we will start with Philippians 1, 3, 11. And the main idea for tonight's Bible study is to explore the importance of choosing generosity and highlighting how our actions shape our character and impact our spiritual growth. And I know some of you are probably like, well, she didn't start with Malachi 310. Right? Next slide. The main purpose of this is that my prayer that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praises of God. God. So generosity is a form of praise. Amen. We'll go on to the next. So why y'all think I didn't use Malachi 310? Because I know those questions are coming up. Why y'all think? Anybody? Nobody? No answers tonight? You got an answer? Why didn't I use it? Nah, 
you close, but Malachi is in the Bible. Thank you. But we often use that one. So I wanted to, um, yes. Yes, yes. And we're going to talk about that because you're, you're kind of hitting, you're kind of close, you're warm to the perspective that I'm bringing tonight. You're very warm to the perspective that I'm bringing tonight. Amen. Next slide. So basically she said that Malachi 310 talked about, you know, what, the, what a tither is and generosity, um, in, in, in short is going above that, right? Going above that. So generosity is often seen as, as simply giving money or material possessions. However, true generosity goes beyond this, just a physical gift. It is a way of life driven by love and selfishness. So in this Bible study, we will explore the concept of generosity and how it can elevate our faith in our character. Amen. Because, next slide, because there can be this tension between having faith and putting it into action. I'm going to say that again. There can be this tension between having faith and putting generosity into action. We cannot truly claim to have faith without showing it through our actions, and that also includes generosity towards others. Amen? So I had a whole different scheme of things. And you know how God works. He, he sometimes wants to flip the script a little bit when you, have, when you think that what you're going to give, what you're going to give um, is, is what you, my mind, thought. And early this morning after prayer call, I took another call. I went on another um, I'm a group call. And somebody introduced me to... Next slide. Infectious Generosity by Chris Anderson. And what she said for me was profound out of the seven things that he talked about. So I want to say that tonight is part one. And I don't know where God is taking me with this, it could be part two, part three, and part four on generosity. So I'm letting you know online too, come on back because we're gonna, we're gonna talk about generosity just a little bit more. Okay. So infectious generosity, if you don't know who Chris Anderson is, he is the founder of TED, which is the um, mother of TEDx. And he talks about how you know, he had to figure out a way to expand Ted. And it was, the reason why he's calling it infectious is because the movement really came at the height of the pandemic. And there had to be a way to be able to use the voices of people around the globe to talk about their experiences. And he said, The generosity of it all was to just do it, to just do it. He didn't worry about finances. He didn't worry about um, copyrights. He didn't worry about all of that. The one thing that did it, and it was a TEDx, it just went viral. It went infectious. And so that's kind of where the premise of the title comes from, um, from this infectious generosity. 
And if, how many of you have watched TEDx talks? Raise your hand. Awesome. Awesome. I'm going to get to that probably next time. Hold your questions for a second. So we're, next slide. So generosity shapes our character. Generosity shapes our character. And so in this, uh, uh, what Anderson is saying, and this is part strategy, right? There's a strategy behind generosity, and tonight, what I'm going to do is just give an overview between his book. And if you are a member of Dare to Imagine and have finished your classes and signed the covenant and received a book called The Generosity Ladder, if you just have this on your shelf, I implore you to open it and look at it. And if you're watching online, it's um, on Amazon as well. It's The Generosity Ladder by Nelson Searcy. So I'm going to do my best to kind of combine what um, the two are saying in, in, in summary. Next slide. So again, generosity comes down. Part one is the strategy. Next slide. So here it has... A single kind act can transform how somebody is regarded. I want y'all to look at that or listen to that. A single kind act can transform how someone is regarded. What, what thoughts come to mind with that? What thoughts come to mind? Anybody? The thought behind paying it forward, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Yes. Awesome, he said, the thing that you think that you can do something, but then in your mind, you say that you can't, but then God tells you that you can. Amen, that's good, that's good, out of the mouth of babes, amen. Yes. Uh. Great. Another one said, um, random acts of kindness for those that are less fortunate. So I'm going to pause here for a moment because I want to tell you a story. My car was acting up. Um, and I was like, oh, Lord, I don't have money for another car. Right? I don't have money for another car. So I started taking um, public transit to, uh, to where I had to go. And I'm originally from New York, and I've been here a long time, y'all, but I drive almost everywhere. <laughs> and so me having to get on the train and everything was like, okay, Lord, let, let's just navigate this. So thank you for technology and, and phones and everything, right? And so my act of kindness as I was going through the terminal and having to walk to my location after I got off the train was to say, for my, my coworkers, I saw the pretzel factory. And I was like, oh, let me go and get some pretzels for us because we're probably going to be at this school all day, right? So let me stop. And I'm early. And I happen to look around. And I see this gentleman sitting over here. And I went to the counter. And I said, I want two of the, I guess it's the five for whatever, and I want two of those. But put five in one, and then I want you to put three in, in one and two in another. I turned around after I was done, and I gave him the two. And he looked, and he was like, What's this for, <laughs> you know? And I was like, be blessed. 
I'm, I'm pretty sure you probably didn't eat today. And he was like, oh, my God, thank you. You know, you, you do have to be careful when you're in those spaces, but I was just following what the Holy Spirit was telling me to do. And as I was walking out, there was a homeless family. And I gave him the three. I did not expect that. And here I am thinking, I'm going to need to find out how I can get another loan to get another car. Right? I'm thinking of my own coming in. But God showed me a whole nother thing that morning. And so, yes, a single kind act can transform how someone is regarded character okay character and I'm pretty sure you all have your stories of your paying it forward um, especially maybe here with Dare to Bless um, Chosen 300 um, and the things that we do here at Dare to Imagine amen amen I love that amen so next slide so what I want you to do is we don't have to think of generosity as a simple um, as a simple, a noble act, we can start thinking of it as an essential strategy. And yet, we recoil at putting the words generosity and strategy together. Generosity is supposed to be a heartfelt, not calculated, and how can we re reconcile this? How can we reconcile the fact that generosity should be a heartfelt thing? It's a heart thing. And how can we uh, 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 take away the calculation of generosity? And so this was in the book of Infectious Generosity. So these are the questions that I'm posing to you. And then we'll, we'll talk more. And I'll give you an example. One thing in the book had here that there was a coffee shop. And when you go into the coffee shop, it's a generosity um, type of coffee shop. And so if you're going in for coffee, you can um, give or pay it forward. Like I've heard a few say that you would pay it forward. But here's the thing. The menu has to a newly single mom, you got this from a single mom, $10. The menu has someone studying for the bar exam, two, from someone going, from someone doing the same, $5. Two, someone struggling in their first year of starting their own business from someone who's made it. It gets better, $6. The free coffee and cake are made that much sweeter by being gifted from a stranger. A stranger who is not only generous, but who, uh, um, who empath empathizes with what you're going through, cares about you, and wants to see you what? Pull through. That's character. That's generosity. Amen? Now, how long have I been speaking? Hmm? Did I give you an amount? Did I tell you how much to pull out of your pocket? Mm -mm. Okay, we're going to keep going. Same with online. Did I give you an amount? No. And if you give, if you see these examples, they were various amounts of generosity. Okay. Amen. Next slide. And so every human decision is made for some kind of benefit, even if it's simply satisfying the call of one's consciousness, right? And satisfying the call or, 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 or scratches and itch in someone's sense, senses, um, it feels good, right? So it's okay for people to have multiple reasons. I'm going to say that again. 
It, it's okay for people to have multiple reasons or good feelings behind their act of giving. Your own reason for giving is your, 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 your. It's your own, your line. It's your own act of giving. And so this sets us free to focus more on the uh, uh, effectiveness of giving than the nuances of the motivation. I love that part. <clears throat> and this, again, is in infectious generosity. Because I want you to say yes because I want to address someone else's needs. I want you to say yes because it's the right thing and I feel good about myself. I want you to say yes because I want to give in a way that could trigger others to respond in kindness. I'm excited that all this could ultimately help my own reputation and it's okay. But once we collectively say yes and accept that it's okay to say, I just want to help somebody, or I just want somebody to see me, or I just want to feel good, it's okay. It will remove so many of the barriers and the hypocrisy and the conversations about generosity that often come into play, and especially in church. Amen? Amen. Next slide. So to summarize, we need not to discount our, uh, the generosity of others, just because they may have additional motives <clears throat> or doing what they do, right? There are always additional motives that we have. Everybody has that. But there's a perfect motive, and that is to be clear that it's our heart that's given. Nobody can tell you your heart but you, and it's your connection with God for that act of kindness. So celebrate your acts of kindness no matter what they are. Next slide. So you may not be able to see this. I wanted to now kind of go into the generosity ladder. But before I do so, the Barna Group, which is one of the leading statistical um, um, platforms and organizations that, that do data or puts together data for churches, they reason why adults give. Why do you choose to give? And for practicing Christians, and this was against practicing Christians, just U.S. adults and just givers, 77% of practicing Christians say, I give because of who I am. It's because of who I am. 8% say because the ministry asked. 8% said because of why I'm asked. 3% says I give because of the person who asks. And 4% said I give because how I am asked. You see that? So the majority of us give is because of our nature. It's because of our character. It's because of the Christian way. That's going to lead me to the next slide. So I had to, next slide. So it's hard to see on the other side, but it gives, you know, a lot of stuff. But I just wanted to highlight the reason why people give. True generosity is a percentage who says always a response to Christ's love. I give because it's a response to Christ's love for me. And that was 60%. Now, you as adults receiving generosity, 65% receive generosity from practicing Christians, practicing Christians, 
That's what this slide represents. So it's 65%. Amen? So now let's talk about the generosity ladder. Again, pull this book out, find it. If it's on the shelf somewhere, if not, email me at Tamara at D2IC.org and we'll figure out a way for you to get it. Because we might be in this book, even though it's a small little it's a small book, we might be in it for a little while longer. So, next slide. And next slide. Everybody good? Y'all quiet. Y'all good? All right. Good. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Next slide. What I love about this book is your, what do we call here at um, Dare to Imagine when pastor ends? Take your next step, right? So now it is time to take your next step to financial peace, which begins with discovering how to scale the generosity ladder. So your first step in the experience of this whole paradigm shift is to acknowledge that you currently see the world through certain sets of lenses. You know, y'all know I'm an optometrist by trade, so I love this part. These lenses have been created by a number of factors. Your family, your upbringing, your education, your social circles, just to name a few of how you look at money. Okay, next slide. Now, your perception of money. I want you to look at this picture and I want you to tell me, do you see an old lady or do you see a young lady? What do you see? Hmm? You see both. Young one comes out. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? You see both? Okay. Anybody else? You don't see the old one at all? Okay. Young lady? You see a young lady and an old one? Okay. So some said they see both. Some say that they see the, the, the young lady first. Some say, I don't even see the old lady in this picture, right? So um, you can find this online. You can kind of practice it and see what you get. But again, your perception of money. What did somebody say? Okay. So your perception of money. Many of us have developed a skewed perception, next slide, of wealth and possessions due to misinformation, poor examples, and poor and personal desires. Our understanding of managing income from birth, birthday money um, to paychecks has been largely um, unconsciously um, formed. Next slide. Unfortunately, these paradigms often lead to financial trouble, contributing to societal debt, broken families, and high stress levels. Despite good intentions, the handling of resources in our culture often results in financial struggles. Next slide. So many feel the need to accrue debt to meet basic needs, while others struggle to find they, uh, to fund vacations, education, elder care, or even retirement savings. Next slide. Most of us, though through though wealth wealth by global standards, are caught in a cycle of constant desire for more. Even those who earn more than uh, $2 a day um, fall within the top 2% of the world's wealthiest people. Amen. Next slide. But despite this relative wealth, and I have air quotes here, many have adopted a buy now, pay later mentality leading to living beyond their means. 
Raise your hand if you feel as though you're living beyond your means. Nobody in here? Good. Okay. <laughs> Barbara's Barbara said yes. <laughs> Somebody acknowledged it. Amen. Thank you for your honesty. Next slide. And so most of us, hold on, I have to catch up to y'all because I was talking through. So the generosity ladder, like any ladder, is a tool right now you are standing if you're like most of us. You are standing at the bottom of the ladder, ankle deep in financial stress and debt, anxiety and frustration, looking toward the top. Unfortunately, they didn't put it all the way up. Looking toward the top of the ladder and trying to figure out how am I going to get there. So part of this book is not only how we can help you with your generosity, but part of this book also gives you tools on handling your finances so that you can be in financial peace. Amen? Next slide. So if we don't learn how to handle our resources the way that God intends it, while never being able to live the life that God created us to live, so the, so the fear has, has to end. Money has to be brought out of the shadows. You know, folks don't want to talk about money. They don't want, they don't want to have that conversation. But it's going to have to be brought out of the shadows. Amen? Amen. Thank you. <laughs> and so, next slide. So before I get into that, I have to say that you know, over the last few years, I've been conscious on figuring out, you know, how do I get my credit score up, you know, get that up, get that up. And I had to be honest with myself that I needed a financial coach. And it wasn't, it was easy for me to uh, 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 really do that. And so now I'm working with a financial coach. So I'm not spending as much money as I was, you know, before going into Starbucks, going into uh, um, um, Dunkin' Donuts and all that stuff. I pack my lunch, you know. Um, how many of you have 50 million subscriptions? Literally today I went through my phone and I was like, I don't use that app. Club, club, boop, 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 boop. I don't need these subscriptions anymore. I got rid of cable. We not home, we working. We got school and all that other stuff. We not even watching TV. Matter of fact, all the kids at home, they not even watching TV. They streaming. So I got rid of cable, went to just increasing my, my speed at home. Cut my cable bill from $300 a month to $100 a month. put fire sticks on each computer or each TV and kept it rolling. And everybody's happy. Nobody's complaining. You know, uh, I know some of y'all, I, I, I felt kind of bad. I was like, oh, I feel like them, them, them um, the four paper antennas. But I went and got the, the antennas and I stuck it on the wall. I was like, yeah, now we can get regular TV, right? I was like, come on, you know, so you're in my house, you got the white thing, it's on the wall, and I'm not ashamed of it because I just saved 200 bucks. Amen? I just saved 200 bucks. So here, unfortunately, it's not a ladder because I couldn't find a picture that, I, that really reflected what that was, so I got some steps, okay? So we're going to take the, the first step. And then we're going to dive into all of these next week. So the first step is really to be an initial giver. A lot of times people think, oh, when, when it's time for offering, I don't have, you know, what do I do? How much do I give? Just don't worry about it. Give what you can give, right? Give what you can give, amen? Then the next one is being a consistent giver. So I'll give an example. Just to say you, you just say, I'm just giving a dollar. I'm just going to the lowest amount. I'm just giving a dollar, right? But be consistent at giving that dollar. So, if you gave a dollar every week, how much is that? Hmm? 
So it's 52 weeks in a year. So you just gave $52. Mm -hmm. You just gave $52. But you was a consistent giver of that dollar. Right? That's what God wants. So it might, you might have to sacrifice. You might not be able to go to the corner store and get your chips for the kids. Right? <laughs> right? You, got, you like chips? I do too. You might have to just go to the produce junction and get some apples and slice them up. <laughs> right? That's your snack. You said no. You say no, don't do that. Okay. So then, so we went from initial, initial giver, step one to a uh, 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 consistent giver, right? And then the next one is intentional giver, right? And I would say when we do the consistent giver, that would be what, pay, what, what Pastor KJ is, is doing, that recurrent giving cycle, right? Signing up for recurrent giving. That's consistent. That dollar is coming out your account. You're not even worried about it. You just, boom, just give it, right? Then that intentional giver is that there's more intentionality in there, so now it's like, you know, God, what do, what do I need to do at this moment, right? So you might give a little bit more at this point. It may not be on a consistent level, but you're giving a little bit more. And then it goes into tithing. That's Malachi 3.10, right? We will talk about that a little bit more uh, later. And then, that's, it, then it leads into the generosity giver. And so with that... With that, I want you to understand that there's levels to this thing. But the thing about it is, is our heart. It's the character of what we're doing, right? And the more that we continually give, the better, right? The better. So next slide. So it says here, be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others. This is from Matthew 6. Um, be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your father. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with, with trumpets. Like I said, I didn't Go boast and say, oh, I gave somebody a whole bunch of pretzels. No, I just did it. Um, as the, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and, and on the streets, do, uh, to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. Verse three. But when you have, when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving may be in secret. Then your, um, then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. I like what it says here in this book because it says it would be best if you didn't brag about the fact that you give or disclose the dollar amount of your gift to your friends and your relatives. But it's saying here, in no way does it mean your church leaders shouldn't know. Okay? So this is saying, you know, you're, you're giving and, and you're going around and you're boasting, oh, I gave $100 to my church. No, when, you don't have to do all of that. Right? You don't have to do that. And nobody's asking you to tell us. But, next slide. That's why I love what we do here at Dare to Imagine. No matter how much you give, we acknowledge that gift of generosity. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter how much you give. What you gave is what you gave. And when you do, you, what do you get? That email, don't you? You get that email saying thank you, right? You get that email saying thank you, right? Online, you're getting that email saying thank you. So we acknowledge that. And we thank you for your generosity. And do you see I still didn't put a dollar amount on there? I still didn't put a dollar amount on there. Amen. So giving, next slide, giving as a reflection of our what? Gratitude, right? Thank you. In 2 Corinthians 9-11, Paul reminds us that when we give, 
It not only meets the need of others, but also overflows in many expressions of thanks to who? God. God, our generosity reflects our gratitude for all that God has blessed us with by giving back to others. And we appreciate God's generosity toward who? Us. Generosity is a lifestyle. Generosity is just not a one-time act, but it is a way of life. And as Christians, we are called to be generous with all that we have and all that we are. This includes our time, talent, our resources, and even our relationships. When we live generously, we are reflecting the love and generosity of God to those around us. Amen. I saw something online about this dollar challenge, but then I flipped it a little bit. It's actually a dollar a day. And so January, I posed that I would be able to save and maybe use that money to be more generous, to save about $2,047, I think this is the way it came out, by December 31st of 2024. By, by taking a dollar a day, but then January is a dollar, February is $2, March is $3 a day, right? For every month, one, two, three, four, five, until it's 12, then it'll end up being $12 a day. But what I did was I looked at my circumstance. I looked at, you know, in the field of optometry, toward the end of the year, Ain't nobody getting their eyes examined. (laughs) So I flipped it. So I put January in January of this year into December, and I put December into January. So this month I'm saving 12, I'm putting $12 a day away. Right? And then I said, well, let me look at this another way. Let me alternate that and see what happens. So that's my challenge for myself, to be able to to save a little bit more money. Amen? And then with that, I know that if I'm doing that, then when the call to um, make a sacrificial offering, I can take that money and give to Dare to Imagine. Amen? So my challenge to you. Next slide. So as we are going to be talking about generosity with the, um, probably next week also, my challenge to you is establishing a clear and simple goal for your giving. So after tonight, pray on it, think about it. Don't tell nobody. Remember the other slide, right? Keep it to yourself and God, right? Become more strategic in your giving. If you are, if you've already been a first time giver on this first step, and then you've been a consistent giver on the second step, and then you've been an intentional giver, I encourage you to sign up for God first, which is the tithing challenge. You can go to d2ic.org and you scroll down and you will see um, God first under next steps. And then from there, once you started with your initial giving, I want you to then become a recurrent giver. Okay? I want you to become a recurrent giver. All right? Even my my college student is now a recurrent giver. I'm a recurrent giver and a tither. Amen? So... Any questions? Any questions? So again, generosity is your character and your heart. And then next week we'll talk about the, the rest of these ladders and, and more of the biblical context. I know I gave you some Bible stuff. But now we're going to, next week, we're going to dive into more biblical um, principles of that. But I wanted to take the stigma out of giving and out of generosity for tonight. 
even including you online. I wanted to take the stigma of giving out so that you can feel comfortable with the idea of being a generous giver. Amen? How do y'all feel? Feel good? Amen. You feel good? Thank you. So if you're watching online, uh, you can always um, text the 34,000 give and you'll get the information. Um, text give to 34,000 and you will get the information about how to give to Dare to Imagine. You can also look at that. You can go to our um, Dare to Bless at dare at dare to bless dot org, all spelled out, and see the impact that Dare to Imagine has done within the Philadelphia community and abroad and nationally. Amen. Um, from your generous donations to our ministry, so part of this is really encouraging you to think about and challenging your thought process around money. Because, you know, sometimes people say money is funny and people don't want to have those conversations. But I wanted to start the conversation at making sure that you understand that it is your individual commitment and your individual relationship with God when you are being generous and when you're giving. Amen? Amen? All right, we're going to close out in prayer, but thank you for watching. Thank you for um, following us today, and I hope and pray that you have learned a little something today about elevating your generosity. Be blessed.